Last episode, we pulled this old Subaru Brumby out of a barn up in Bilpin, which is apple growing country in the Blue Mountains just west of Sydney. And we're building this car with support from Subaru, who are celebrating 50 years in Australia. That's right, and the car is going to be raffled off when it's finished. Some lucky person is going to end up owning this thing uh, and to help fundraise for the Australian Road Safety Foundation. Now, it does look a little bit cleaner than when you saw it last time because it was absolutely filthy after sitting for over a decade. And so uh, we took it outside and gave it a bit of a clean. I was actually pretty surprised just how clean this car is underneath all that mud. Usually when you see all that, you think, oh no, it's going to be rusted out shell. Actually, it's in really good condition and we got really lucky. The car was stored in a barn, which made a huge difference. So a lot of that mud just fell off. And today, hopefully, we won't be covered in all of it as we begin to strip the car. So what are we doing today? Well, the first step is we're going to completely blow this car apart. So the engine's coming out, that's going in the bin. The interior's coming out. We want to see what's going on underneath everything, anything that's hidden from view, and then basically start getting a plan together on what we're going to do with this car. It's going to be an absolutely epic episode of Mighty Car Mods. So hang with us. This is going to be unreal. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We are going to completely strip this thing. The drive line's coming out, anything that's attached to the outside's coming out, and the interior is also being removed because we are going to take this right back to basics and paint it. This build will be one of the biggest projects that we've ever attempted in the history of making Mighty Car Mods, and it's going to take our abilities and patience to the limit. Not only are there technical limitations and mechanical hurdles in the way, the car will also need to be signed off by a qualified engineer to make it able to be driven legally on Australian roads when it eventually finds its way into one lucky viewer's garage. Our first step is to get rid of everything that we no longer need, and in our case, that means pretty much everything, as we're going to be replacing most components with new and custom parts. From the wheels and brakes, through to the driveline, engine and even the interior, it's a massive job and we're going to be working solidly on it for at least a few months. That in itself may seem like it's a long time, but a restoration of this detail and scope is something that's usually only attempted once in a lifetime, so we're definitely going to need to call in reinforcements when the going gets tough. It is an absolute mess in here and by absolute mess, uh, we've got all sorts of wiring out the wazoo. Uh, and we also have a, um, a dead creature a, That's a bone, isn't it? And some meaty looking stuff. Oh uh, yeah, it's like and a it's, bit of fur, a bit of bone. It's, it's some kind of creature that's been living up here. Surrounded um, by turd as well. Uh, this here though, this side and the front is appears to be all clear now. There's a weird rod here that goes straight down the middle that we don't know what that does, but I'm going to take that off in a second. How's your side looking, mate? Somehow related to the clutch. Um, my side's looking all right. I took off like a million fuel and vacuum hoses. It's worth remembering this, this was done in like the emissions times, you know, when it's like, oh, how do we make our old carby things still pass the, the emissions and not use much fuel? That was one reason these cars were popular. They didn't use that much fuel compared to like a giant V8 ute that you might buy for your farm. And also it was four wheel drive. So yeah. one of the reasons it's popular, but also complex, like look at all this. So later model stuff will not be as complex, which is hopefully what we'll be able to put in this. Yeah, so look, there's just a couple of other things that have got to come off and then uh, we can get this out, Martin. Yep, the idea, is, the idea is to get the drive line out, the engine out, gearbox out, clear up the engine bay, start to pull off any sort of trims, get it ready for paint. We've undone everything. We think. This will be our first attempt at trying to put this back where it belongs in a museum. Yep. A Subaru museum. It's coming, Martin. It's starting to slip on it. No, need to go up. Forklift time. Still something down there. Drop the sway bar, we'll make it easier for ourselves. All right, that might buy us a bit more space. Second attempt with the sway bar gone. Right. This is momentous, people. There it is, people. As you can see behind me, the heart, the now non-beating heart of the Brumby. It's time for it to go to a better place. What's going to go in its place, you may be asking? 
we're going to show you soon. There's a decent amount of space in the engine bay, which opens up some exciting opportunities when it comes to power plants. And later in this video, I'll show you what I've bought to transplant into the bay that'll upgrade power, modernize features, and also maintain the purity of this Brumby. The next job now is to pull out everything in the engine bay that's in the way of paint, because we are changing the color of the car. And we want to change the color of the engine bay anything you can see here needs to be removed. So some of this stuff will go back in, like maybe aircon, for example, or a charcoal canister or a radiator overflow bottle. But all this old junk is going straight in the bin. We'll do a similar thing with the interior, although not the whole interior, because some of it won't change. Like the headlining is pretty good, so that can stay. But other bits and pieces, like the seats and that, will come out. When you're excited about working on your project car, it's easy to underestimate how long or how hard a job is going to be. Stripping a car entirely back to its panels is a huge undertaking because every last bit of wiring, rubber, glass and the mechanical parts need to come out. And if they're going back in again, they need to be catalogued and put safely aside. Although I was trying to get the windscreen out complete, I broke it, so a new one will need to go back in when we're done. A panel shop can do this part of the job for you, but by doing all the stripping yourself, you can save some budget for mods, leaving them to do what they are best at, which is paint. And maybe next time they can pull the windscreen out too. Along with the engine bay parts, I'm going to strip the seats, the plastic interior, the dash, the steering wheel and everything in and around the tray in the back. Any of the hanging panels like the guards I'm also going to pull off so I can clean underneath them and get rid of all the country bush dust. The paint shop asked that I supply the car as clean as possible, so I hit it with some degreaser and then the beefiest electric pressure washer I could find. Dirt and dust is the enemy of a good paint job, so the effort I put in here will pay dividends later on. Brumby is clean as I'm going to be able to get it. Next stop, VIP smash repairs to see some friends of mine to get this thing painted. Brothers Joey and Alex started VIP smash repairs together not too long ago, but have been watching Mighty Car Mods since they were in high school, and they've agreed to help us turn this Brumby from farm truck to showstopper. I've given them a pretty tight timeline, but to my surprise, within a week they call me to say the car is blown apart and prep is underway, so come down and check it out. The car has been laid out like an IKEA flat pack. And why is that exciting? Because today, it's all gonna start to get stripped. All the old paint's gonna come off. The guys have already removed the panels and done that sort of stuff. The car is looking really, really good. Um, and I've made it easier for them because I haven't brought them something that is completely rusted and rubbish. So uh, now just the hard work begins. The guy's just gonna get into it. I'm gonna work experience kit a little bit. And then, hopefully, the end of today, we're also gonna spray out our color and we're gonna see the color for the first time on a sample card. We can take it away and see what it looks like in the light. Then we can tweak it if we need to. And then once the car's high filled, we'll be back hitting it with color. I think a big reason why I get so excited about a build like this is the feeling that you're repairing something rather than just sticking it in the bin. While I'm known for that comment and its application to dirty Hondas, I actually think there's a real joy to be found in bringing something back to life, making it as good or better than when it rolled off the showroom floor. It takes a huge amount of time, thought, skill, effort, and of course manual labor, but the results are truly worth it. And I cannot wait to see how this thing turns out. So this is autumn green metallic. Now, it does look kind of brown uh, and then sort of flips to a greeny color. When you see it on an entire car, it does sort of glow a little bit more green. This is a color that you see on Outbacks and a couple of like really modern Subarus. When this is combined with like black powder coated satin black bull bar and all the trims and everything, I think it's gonna look amazing. So I'm very keen and uh, very excited to see a modern color on an old car, but still pays homage to the sort of oldness of it like it's i don't think it would be right to put wrc bright blue on it it would just look a bit weird but i think this is going to look understated and also awesome so uh, a little bit more work for the boys to do with high fill we're going to come back when it's time to stick on the final color and then we're going to see the brumby completely painted i've been completely blown away by how efficiently the guys at vip smash have brought this together and i cannot wait to see the car in its final color 
This project is coming together crazy fast while all the driveline and mechanical stuff is happening. Joey, Alec and the boys at VIP Smash have also been very, very busy getting it finished off. Since you last saw it, some high fills gone on and they've blocked it back to make it nice and smooth. The car is in the booth, about to get the colour, which means we're going to see it right now. This has turned out even better than I could have imagined. It's a huge deal picking your final colour and a huge amount of work if you want to change it again. Luckily for us, the modern green works brilliantly on the lines of the old Brumby. And while it spends some more time in the booth hardening, I'm heading back to Super Garage as my good friend has just made another purchase. We have come to an exciting part of this build. My good friend has been out searching car sales, searching gum trees, searching marketplace, trying to find us a donor vehicle to get all the parts we need to make this Brumby just bellissimo. He has found something. He's just got back. I can hear it. Here it is, people. Oh, God. This is the sweetest smelling Forester I've ever experienced. When you're buying a car for like under $5,000, normally you're getting absolute rubbish. This is amazing. Dude, we just this picked is... this up 10 minutes ago from Marrickville. He asked four and a half thousand dollars. We never pay asking price. Four thousand dollars manual. Smells great. Really heavy duty clutch. That might need to change, man. It's like popping my hip out. The, the, I'm going to say what everyone's thinking. This is too clean. Yeah. So we're going to find out that it's stolen. No, no, it's legit. It's just, it's just. There's hardly any around. We've yeah. been looking for a very, very long time for this. Weirdly, you can still get turbo ones of this kind of era, but not naturally aspirated ones. Uh, I've never seen it before. Uh, never seen it before today. The Subaru Forester has been made in Japan since 1997, originally built on the same platform as the Impreza. This is the first generation, the SF, that was built as a station wagon, but with more clearance like an SUV, and people loved them so much that they were sold all over the world. In Australia, these are a fairly common car due to being all-wheel drive, small enough for city driving, but large enough to be capable on the back roads and snow country. So there you have it, Subaru Foresters. These ones usually end up doing a lap of Australia with a couple of stinky backpackers in them that haven't had a shower for way too long and end up being sold for scrap. This one smells good, is in good condition and will be perfect for our car, which I think will become a classic. Hand me your telephone, Martin. Oh, why? Why? And face ID it. Yep, done. You done it? All right. You know how on your phones, if you press the little star button, it says favorite? Marty's favorite list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine of these people own Subarus. So I'm just gonna hit one by random and go, what are you doing tonight? This Forester is going to supply a lot of the parts that we need for our Brumby, but it's gonna be a big, messy job. So we've invited a bunch of mates over to Super Garage who are gonna help us pull it apart. You may have worked out by now that we're going to be EJ swapping our Brumby. The EA81 engines that come in them originally are 1.8 litre, carby and getting hard to find parts for. This upgrade will give us a bump in power, good fuel economy and heaps more access to parts that are still available, while still keeping the purity alive. 
We're going to be using as much of the Forester driveline and electrical parts as we possibly can, so we'll be stripping this Forester right back down to basics. We've chosen a 2 litre EJ20 out of this specific Forester as they have a good balance of weight, power and willingness to rev, which in a Brumby will be great fun. You also don't need to cut up your classic car to make it fit, and importantly, it's possible to engineer the modified car in our state for road use. Thanks to some help from our awesome group of mates, we've got the driveline out in just one evening's work. There's still heaps more to do, but we are making great progress. A massive thank you to everybody that came down to help us strip this Forester. This Forester is actually in incredible condition for its age, and I'm very happy that the sacrifice that it's made is going to live on in our mad Brumby. That's right, it's not gonna get scrapped either, so we're just gonna, actually gonna get rid of it, basically give it away as a good rolling shell. Maybe someone will turbo convert it or do something cool with it, um, but it has given all its best bits over to our Brumby, and I'm glad we get it, managed to get one that's in really good condition, because that will actually save us a whole bunch of time. There's a couple of little bits in here that we still need to do, um, uh, that we still need to take out, so we're about to do that in a second. And then next episode, uh, the Brumby's gonna be back here uh, from the paint, which is going to be awesome because we all get to see it under the lights of Super Garage, which is going to be amazing. Uh, and a special guest who's going to be joining us as well, who's got some Brumby skills. That's exactly right. Now, just a reminder, you can actually end up owning this Brumby. It is going to be raffled off if you're in Australia um, and it's to raise funds for the Australian Road Safety Foundation and to celebrate Subaru being in Australia for 50 years. So thanks to those guys for helping make this happen. I'm very excited to see the Brumby back. It is going to be here next episode. Super keen.